Are we live? We're live. Man, I wish I rehearsed that beforehand because it was a little flash of us in there, but we're just so excited. We just slid right in there. This is the most exciting live stream of 2023. I guarantee it, at least for yes. the Cadence community. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. This is like, oh, yeah. We've been waiting a while Thanks, for man. this. Yeah, and waiting a long time. I don't think this is going to be. I think there's going to be other things we release this year that are going to be more exciting. This is this is exciting as a dev, but I think some of the things we're working on right now are going to be much more flashy, exciting coming up. That's about all I can we'll say. We'll the most exciting so far, then. <laughs> so far, that's a better way to do it, yeah. There we go. Well, I, I'm very excited about it because we've just been waiting for so long and I've been seeing all of these previews yeah. and then it's such a relief to just be able to turn it over to everyone and know that it's in their WP admin dashboard and, you know, thousands of people are playing with this right now and seeing the yeah. magic of what Cadence Blocks is bringing to WordPress right now. The And I'm just like so excited for everything else. So Ben, um, <laughs> How's the launch been going from your standpoint as the lead dev who really envisioned all of this, the, uh, the Jedi that you've been, <laughs> how oh, has no. that been for you this week? Uh, yeah, it's good. I think anytime you, you do such a big change, there's some like things that we just didn't catch. And I think given our, like, we've just been really fast to get that stuff fixed and pushed out. I think we've pushed out six updates since it went live and so i knew we were going to do some of that with just like little things that people found um and so i would say like yeah it's it's probably a little bit more than i expected but also at the same time nothing that's concerning mostly it's like you know we're talking about a there's a little bit of a margin issue on a page or something like that and the few bigger things that people ran into on really obscure servers or like just had you know some some things that we we never were able to recreate but did figure out fixes for just by describing what was going on and um so there's like there's all of that like ride where you're like excited that people are having it and there's a lot of people that are like this is amazing this is so fun to use or this is just way better interface and then there's also the like hey but this isn't working for me and it used to and i hate that so i'm like okay let's figure this out and so doing a lot of recreating really obscure <laughs> layouts and things where people are using custom CSS and going, okay, like w how do we make sure that that still works in 3.0, even if that isn't what cadence does like, and so getting all of that kind of stuff under wraps is, is good. I mean, at this, at this point, I'm feeling like we're, you know, we're over the top of, any of the issues and we're coming down the back slope and just helping people, you know, with some of the new setting layouts and things like that. Gotcha. Yeah. WordPress QA. If you think about it, just the, the WordPress world, if you're a product developer in the WordPress world, you're not just doing something for one application, you know, it's, it's not like you're, we're running Shopify here and we have control over all of the environment variables. We have people who are hosting on various versions of PHP, various versions of WordPress, though you guys should all be on 6.1 as the security person here. Because <laughs> Come on, come up to 6.1 <laughs> with us. But still, I mean, there's a lot of people for various reasons. Maybe they're running a plugin mm -hmm. that isn't ready for 6.1, and so they have to stay on a previous version. So that variable comes in. There are people who want to tweak things and add custom CSS. There are variations of other plugins that come in and have certain styles that they might be throwing up for for WordPress. And so for QA for WordPress is incredibly difficult just because there are so many variables and you want it to work everywhere. But so there's like certain baseline decisions that you make, right? Of like, okay, we're going to do this PHP version, this, you know, Apache version, there's like so many different things that get thrown into the mix. And you say, okay, I think this covers like 90% of WordPress. But thanks to all of you like 10%ers who are 
<laughs> off there on the edges doing interesting things just to keep Ben and our dev team's lives very, very interesting. We found, uh, a, we've heard a lot of interesting stories. And thanks to everybody who's come forward with your edge case situations and for your patience. Um, we've had quite a few requests of, of various things. And so there have been, what version are we on now of, of 3.0? 3.0.14. Okay. Uh, and 3015 is getting prepped. We were working on it this morning, and so that'll go out this afternoon. Um, and yeah, I mean, it'll continue to kind of be that way. Um, normally, we wouldn't push updates out this quick, but when we're just doing bug fixes and like you can just be like, okay, it's just changing this, then it's like get it out as quick as we can. Part of that is just to help anyone else if they run into it so that we can get ahead of that and yeah, definitely for everyone out there who's like we've there's just been so many kind people who are very patient and uh, like so helpful getting us access to their site to mm -hmm. say so we can see what's going on and recreate it easier. And yeah, it's been and, it, and it's been interesting, too. Like there's definitely a lot of notes I'm taking of like, hmm, we, we should have probably foreseen this like this was this was one we should have caught. And so trying to figure out how do we, you know, optimize our QA process better. I mean, I feel like we did more QA for this update than anything else we've ever done. And at the same time, I'm like, yeah, we missed some clear things that um, that didn't get caught. And so some of that is just, it, it, you know, usually it's a very easy, <laughs> like moving something in the code and that fixes it. But, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a, yeah, it's been a, a wild couple of days and pretty normal for a big release like this i mean for me this is the biggest release i've ever done in yeah. terms of code change and um such an emphasis on backward compatibility where we just have a lot of code written in to to make it backward compatible um right. so yeah yeah and we've got uh marcus who has stated that he has not updated yet he's waiting for everybody else to shake out all of the bugs for him, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do, don't you Absol think? Abs absolutely, yeah. I, I do the same thing with WooCommerce. Yeah. I mean, they're <laughs> every time they update, I wait. Because it's it's just impossible to test every possible scenario. And yeah. WooCommerce has historically pushed out a major update and then done a bunch of, you know, oh, fix, 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 fix. Um, they've change the way they do updates now which is op like really helped that now woocommerce does a lot more smaller updates um which is a lot different so they don't have that same they used to do these like three or four major updates a year and it would be like everything would get broken and but yeah they've changed how they did that which i mean for for us now that this is out is much more of the track we want to be on we don't want to be on this track of like here's a, an update that you know we started working on last April, like we want to be doing stuff that's a lot smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes this needs to be done. I mean, what happened with the, the, the trajectory of how cadence has grown, um, how it started, you released cadence blocks to the world before Gutenberg was ever a part of core, which I think is phenomenal and released, really a testament to the vision, vision that you have of what can be done mm -hmm. with blocks and building websites. Um, I think it's just absolutely amazing. But when you're that early to the party, <laughs> there's got to be some adjustments. And now you can see, you know, more of where the future is going. So being able to like really have that vision to bring it forward to a project like Cadence as it's growing and growing all the time um, and being able to really set some stakes in the ground and saying, okay, this is what we're going to do and this is what we're going to build and here's the reasons why is, is phenomenal. So I would like to ask you some questions because you yeah. wrote a very, very good blog post that explained so much. So you did explain mm -hmm. um, in, the, in that blog post, uh, I think Gilbert can pop that 
link in the chat if you haven't if you're not on our mailing list you should be on our mailing list because then you would have gotten this if you're not following us on our socials you would have gotten this post and there's everything you need to know about cadence blocks 3.0 in this post but it's good to hear it sometimes from from ben and also we would love to entertain your questions as well if you read the blog post and you have mm -hmm. questions about some of the decisions yep. that have been made here we want to answer them that's why we're doing this live stream because you as a part of the cadence community are a part of this you know, it's not just Ben setting this vision. It's Ben setting this vision because he listens to you and listens to what you need yeah. in order to build more effective sites. So he hears that and he's like, all right, this is going to serve my community. This is what I'm going to do. Um, so, Ben, you rewrote, modernized, cleaned and improved Cadence blocks um, using uh, new uh, component libraries, updated React structure. Pick something that you build and let's just start there. Like, what do you want to talk about of those stakes that you put into the ground and, and staked your claim of like what this is going to be? What what drove those decisions and what did you see in WordPress that made you make those choices? Sure. I think for most users, the, the exciting part of the code change is the front end stuff. So optimizing all the CSS. We changed from a jQuery based slider to a much more performant slider. Um, we have a new light box that's a little bit more performant, has a nice, um, you know, our previous light box didn't let you just swipe on mobile, which is like, you know, really nice when you're going through a, a light box. So like, there's some things like that, that were just like, we made this better. The video pop-up light box is much better. Um, and like you can make a button open up a video, just one of our like in blocks free and that like whole experience is cool and, and better. Um, so there's like a lot of that optimization part, which is just like tweaking how we output the code. And then there's the like back end react part. That's like, you know, as Gutenberg keeps progressing and kind of being its own code base it's based on react but it's very much the gutenberg thing um getting in line with like the direction that all of their like the gutenberg team is building stuff getting in line with that using the new updated um apis so like all the blocks are now on version two api instead of version one um which changes how we do stuff in the back end and like overall is going to make everything just a lot better and easier to use as we go forward um, and creating whole new builds. So like even one of the things we're going to be doing here is um, allowing you to disable a single block and not just like turn it off, but actually prevent any of that from loading on the back end of your website, which we previously couldn't do because all of the JavaScript kind of gets compiled into one JavaScript file. And that's like our cadence blocks file. And we separated all of those out. So now you can actually like, as we go forward, we'll make it possible where you'll be able to like disable a block if that you don't want to use. And that JavaScript won't even load in the back end of your website because we've kind of pieced it all out that way in the build structure. And so like, there's a whole lot of technical stuff like that doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it's whatever, like you just want to use the yeah. tool. Um, but there's a lot of technical stuff that went into like just figuring out how we're going to do this and how we're going to create a components library and all of that. So that part um, is exciting for us because it just means like, it's just going to be a lot easier to start building on that. Uh, and even like, you know, having a shared components library between blocks free and blocks pro and things like that, it's going to be um, okay. a lot easier to, to just innovate and see that across the board. Okay. Great. Um, we've got a question here from Steve Cantor, and he's confused about version three and Blocks Pro. Are these new features available on the Pro version? So can you talk a little bit about where are these updates went and how Pro relates to that? Yeah, so everything is in Blocks Free. We have pushed out four updates recently for Blocks Pro with a lot of um, updated stuff, particularly JavaScript on the front end, some of that like performance stuff. But like you're not going to see the tab structure yet, or we haven't broken up all of the back end JavaScript. So that's coming in Blocks Pro 2.0, which you know we're actively working on. Um, and so I, I think like the ability to use um, variables and 
a lot of that stuff that's still coming into pro as well as just like kind of what we did with free where we're going to go through and audit a lot of those blocks and say like okay what what settings are we missing here and how do we standardize this better um so a lot of that's coming but blocks pro still works like we've updated it to work with um free it still will do everything you want what's really the the major difference is that the settings panel is just not updated and some of those blocks are like missing things that you would expect which we're you know we're working on in terms of like when i set the font size to be excel instead of a certain pixel size like you can't do that in the pro mm -hmm. blocks yet right okay let's talk about that since you brought it up this whole um shift away from okay I've, I coded websites way back before everybody had, you know, these goofy things. And as soon as these came out and I'm like, I got to design for that now too. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to go hide in a meadow in Mount Shasta. <laughs> that was not responsive design has never been fun for me. I'm um, having to like figure out every single um, viewport size, every single, it just, it's really complicated and I have not enjoyed that process. Um, I don't know if a lot of people have enjoyed that process, but I think a lot of people have gotten used to, okay, I know my pixel sizes that I want to use for desktop, for tablet. I know it, like they get into a habit of using pixel sizes and now we're shifting over to clamp. I think we need to talk a little bit about what clamp is and the benefits to that. Um, just to kind of like open uh, to me as I've been working with it, it feels like going from, okay, I know how to drive my manual transmission. Don't take it away from me, but here's a nice automatic transmission. You don't have to worry about all of the shifting and the mm. clutch and all of that stuff. It kind of feels like that to me. Is that like a good analogy of what yeah, I like that analogy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, we're giving you some presets in clamp too, but if you like, you don't actually have to give up crazy control when using clamp. Like what we've defined is what is pretty reasonable and pretty standard out there for like, what is an extra large font size and things like that. But if you do want to control that and you want to say like, I want to control the clamp thing, you can do that. We don't give you the interface for that, but it's just one line of CSS because you're changing a variable and a variable is globally set. So, um, you know, it's not that you can't like clamp means you don't get to control. Like if you're like, I want it to be exactly this pixel size on this screen size and exactly this pixel size on this one, you can still do that pretty easily. Um, obviously you can do it in our interface, but it won't use clamp. You're just going to be setting it manually or you can, um, you can set your clamp styles um, yourself just with using a line of CSS and saying like, Hey, for this variable, you know, for cadence blocks, extra large font variable, I want it to use this clamp style. And you okay. can stick that in the customizer and it would apply to your site. Okay. But what are the benefits to like moving towards clamp? Does it make designing easier? What is... Yeah. Yeah. So instead of having to think about pixel size and all that, you're basically saying, I want a large font. And that doesn't mean I want a certain size font. It means I want a large font, but I want that to be appropriately large on all of the different screens so on desktop it's going to be larger than on mobile and with clamp it does that for you automatically so instead of having to say like specifically on mobile i want it to be 40 pixels and on desktop i want it to be 80 you set the size and then the clamp basically says like okay we're going to resize this based on the screen size so you get really consistent design without having to do all this manual defining of what size per screen size um which so it's just going to flow really nicely and so you switch to thinking i need a 50 pixel font here like heading to like i need an extra large heading and that is going to stay extra large on every screen size but because i'm using clamp everywhere it's going to be relative to the the size of the screen and to all the other fonts Great. I think that's a really good explanation. And as if, if we do get to a demo, which I hope we can do, um, just yeah, showing sure. a few things, um, you can point out where where all of that is and what we're referencing and say, you know, this is this is what Clamp offers you as an option. Um, I think that'd be really, really great. Um, OK, uh, some more questions. Um, 
All right. And also that blog post really gives you some good um, overviews. And we will have some videos coming forward as well that will show you a little bit more about what Clamp can do. And I think that will yeah. make things a lot, a lot clearer. Um, so that's all the variables that you have in your settings. And it just makes everything so much more responsive. But we'll, um, we'll do some more tutorials on that as well. Um, all right. More questions. I just lost my blog post. <laughs> my document um so i'm gonna pull some questions <laughs> hannah you've got questions right what what's are some of the things that um that we uh is yeah and no promises on that marcus we're not <laughs> sure if it's gonna be <laughs> Okay. Um, and Michelle Noon, Michelle Noon asked if we're planning to add a section to the customizer to enable setting clamp values. I don't know if yes. you can pull that question up, Kathy. Yeah, I'm trying to find that one. So that for the cadence theme, specifically like you set your H1, H2 and all of that font, you still set it the old way, but that is something we're going to update pretty soon here where we're going to allow you to set it to the same pattern that blocks uses so you can say like i want to use clamp styles and then set it as far as an interface on that maybe i'm not i'm not decided yet there's a lot of calculators that you can use online if you're like i want a custom clamp thing and i want to define it i think in general trying to explain that to the majority of users is just like way over the top when we can just say like choose your your font size um, so, <clears throat> yeah, Ben, maybe you can tell us why, like just your thinking behind using clamp. Cause it does seem like it's new for a lot of people. Um, and so, yeah, maybe like, what was your reasoning for it? Um, the, the reasoning is the benefits of it's just a much simpler interface. Mo like people who are on this live stream and in general, like our pro users are much more interested in doing things because they understand what a pixel is, what padding is, what margin is, and yeah, all that sure. stuff. A, a vast majority of our user um, user base does not think about things in pixels or understand what padding is or whatever. They just yeah. want a large font. And so we're trying to create a system that is both easier to use and beneficial even if you're a pro user. And so things like being able to define your font as extra large is a, is and connecting it to a variable rather than a static um, CSS line is is a more pro pro user thing to do and is easier for the the beginner. So yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's good for people to know that they can still drive the manual car though if they want. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And there's going to be times where you need to, right? Like there's going to yeah. be times where you're like the, cause we can't give you unlimited options for like, you know, right now I think for font sizes, there's six options or something like it's small, medium, large, extra, large, extra, extra, large, and extra, 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 large. <laughs> if, if we keep going, like you could say, well, what about four X and five X font sizes? Like I have a use case for that. Or what about like, there's obviously a lot of times where you're just going to need to go and then say, I need this to be custom. And I think the same is true when you're dealing with paddings and things like that. Like mm -hmm. we gave some sane, uh, reasonable defaults, but if you want more, like if you want more padding, if you're like that five X is not enough, I need what would essentially be 10 X or whatever. Like you can just go right into the settings like you would previously and define that, um, just by clicking a switch and turning off like the variable setting and switching it to um pixels which i mean maybe we should just get in and show some of that like yeah 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 <clears throat> so um this is what we're talking about with like padding where we've defined you know for this one a certain amount of options but if you want more padding than 5x you would come in and this is your this is my setup right here all I've got to do is switch to custom sizing. And I can see that that padding on the top was roughly 160 pixels. And I can change that to 300 if I want to. And I can even drag it. Like, it's not like you're locked into dragging only on that size. As soon as you switch it to custom, 
then you're in that um, the drag will still work in whatever unit size you're using. So if you want, you know, to make all of this custom, it's, it's you know, one click and you're in a way you go. And so with, with font sizes, this one, because this is actually built on 2.0, this demo, um, is using 70. I can switch that and then choose one of these um, fonts. And again, with line height, this kind of all gets set to a non-unit now, and at least by default. Um, but all of this is how that works. And again, if you want to go to custom, it's just one click. Um, and then something cool too, like just to, you know, as we're sitting in here, like the type text is a nice like feature ad um, that came where you can define the diff the like different strings you want to do. And you've got some settings here for like smart backspace and stuff, and then some speed settings and you can enable looping or not and change the cursor. And then like even right in the editor, you get a nice demo of this. Um, which is just an interesting way to, you know, draw attention to a, a sentence, whatever. Um, yeah. So that's like, that's something new. We also added, which Jake was a big proponent of, um, icons into the advanced uh, text box. So you can now mm -hmm. drop an icon on the left or right side. That way you don't have to like, if you're like, I just really need an icon before this text, you can you can do that right in the single block instead of having to like create a section and set it to horizontal and do that. So that's, that's awesome. like a nice little feature that we added as well. And I mean, as we're here, like a lot of places where, you know, you would normally set it in pixels or you could like before we had, we had variables here, but we didn't have it set for different screen sizes. Uh, and we also had a limitation of like our variables was all you could do for gutter. And now you can set a custom gutter um, or just use one of the variables. Um, and so, yeah, this just got a lot, a lot smoother in terms of how you do stuff. You know, the big updates for inner blocks was switching um, a lot of these, a lot of these blocks that we built originally to solve a problem that inner blocks couldn't solve now inner blocks can and so if you look at the um, structure here the advanced buttons now holds two individual blocks um, and this is great because like you can actually um, move buttons around where you previously couldn't like i just pulled a single button out of this and put it over here you can do that it's a lot easier to copy styles of a single button and apply it to something else and then you still get all the alignment options and some of that is a lot more um like you can do a lot more alignment stuff with the um advanced buttons block in terms of how you want things to to be set up so you get some like cool new features for sure cool. um can, can we just shout out the fact that on hover to be able to see the padding with the row layout? Thank you. <laughs> that is so amazing uh, because just yes. being able to just like visualize, okay, mm -hmm. and now I see, I can see my padding. Yes. And that's yeah. yeah. So that's awesome. little things like that, that you've added. Um, and then you're going to have to demo just right here, just so that everybody can cure their depression. We had a comment on the blog where somebody's like, <laughs> oh, thank you for curing my depression. Just show us how we can slide those sections back and forth. How yeah. beautiful is that? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so easy. Imagine. So it, and then too, like you can, you know, create more interesting layouts where you've now got the possibilities for a grid inside of a row layout that you never had before. Um, and that's all because you can drop things in and out and it's a lot easier to pull sections out and then put them back in um or move them around and all of that so yeah that um that got a lot a lot nicer in yeah in this update a and lot, then lot nicer did, did you show the the typed I, I did see the typed text there but can you just show basically how someone can can set that up real quick because we're seeing some comments about that yeah so 
uh, like if we wanted to do it on this coffee one, you would just select that and hit typed text, and then you add additional strings. Um, um, this doesn't make any sense, but I can <laughs> like add as many as I want, and then like once I step out, right, then it's going to start working, and then I can click back in and get back to this panel. And so you've got settings for speed and delay and backspace, and you can do um, smart backspace where like it will only backspace, which isn't which is new. So if you've got like a three letter string where you're only changing the last word or three word string, we're only changing the last word. And then the final you want that whole three words to go away and only one word to show or something like that. You can do that where it like it only backspaces the last word and then it backspaces the whole thing and just show one word. It's kind of, um, yeah, it's cool stuff you can do awesome. for sure. Great. And then the ability to loop and stuff. And, and I know a lot of people come to Cadence because it's it's the best with performance. Like we, I just heard a podcast. Um, we linked it in the Facebook group about someone who switched their th their site's theme to Cadence, and then all of a sudden Google loved them. We're here for performance. Can you talk about um, Blocks 3 and how that has impacted performance? Are we seeing improvements? Are we seeing hits? What What's going on with performance? Yeah, it, improvement for sure. So the whole like JavaScript part where we optimized, got away from jQuery, got away from with the sliders. And then the same is true, which has always been true for Cadence, and that is we don't load anything that you're not using on the front end of your website. So if you never add a testimonial block or anything with a carousel, we'll never load that JavaScript on the front end of your website. And that's huge for performance because you're not, mm -hmm. you know, with a lot of these page, build page builders and stuff like that, like they have all these amazing tools and then you add all these add-ons and all of those have amazing tools. And then you go look at the front end and you're like, oh, I'm loading 40 scripts to power all of these tools. And actually on this page, all I have is text. Like they're, they're not distinguishing between any of that. Whereas this is like, if you have a page that doesn't use any cadence blocks, then nothing from cadence will load. So it can be really performant. And so it's on a page by page thing of how like performant you can be. And so certainly like if you have a, you know, a page that's a mile long and you're loading every single block and even then it's still going to be pretty fast, but <laughs> there's just not a whole lot that we're having to load because we're using a lot of the more optimized um, JavaScript libraries that are out there. Amazing. That's really good to know. And we've got a comment here from our good friend, David McCann, um, just about the guts that, that this has taken in the vision, which <laughs> amazing and I, I bet you david was a part of the beta and gave you some good ideas as well because he's just pretty brilliant that way <clears throat> um, had, got, uh, yeah so many great people in the beta that sent such good feedback amazing yeah and if we haven't thanked you enough let's yeah. let's just thank you again yeah. for it this has really been a very community invested uh mm -hmm process. And that's been, that's been great. Um, we've got another question from Michelle Noonan. Uh, previously, when you changed the order of columns, it didn't change the classes, inner column, half, etc. Does 3.0 swap those classes so that they're hierarchical in the DOM? No. And those classes are meaningless now. The only reason we actually okay. leave inner column class in there is for backwards compatibility. Um, at some point in the future, well, we probably will never take them away. At some point, we might, tr you know, experiment with that. But um, those were previously used to help define the layout because we were using Flex CSS. So then when you dealt with columns, each column needed to have its width defined. Now that we're using Grid CSS, we define the width for the, all the columns on the row. And it doesn't matter how many internal sections you have and everything like that. In terms of hierarchy for the DOM, DOM understands hierarchy. The class didn't didn't have any effect on that. Or it wasn't positive or negative. It, it, it doesn't read the CSS and say, this one says one and this one says two. And why it, the order, that doesn't matter to the DOM. It's just about the HTML. So um, by switching to grid CSS, that class effectively becomes ineffective. I just gotcha. know of people who were using that class 
to add styles to their website. And so we couldn't remove it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stop targeting them. I mean, I, I see. So ideally if you want to target the, like, if you want to say, I want to target column section three, uh, like the column block, that's the third in this use, um, Ninth, ninth order like you can do this in css where you just do like ninth child three and then which i mean uh, yeah i don't know how to demo that but you can target things based on the order that they are in the dom without needing a css class to do it for you and that would be a lot more effective way to do it okay great can we talk a little bit about block defaults yeah because i know there's there's some New toys in Block Default, yeah. aren't there? Yeah, Block Defaults. So I can, you know, for this button, for example, it's set on theme and medium and auto. Um, and I could come in and change some styles. And then inside of my Block Defaults, I can set that block as the default. So which let me actually change something here so we actually can visualize this. Um, we're going to give it that background color. And we'll set that as the default. And so now, anytime I add a new... Uh, yeah, i got to select a parent, don't I? A new one that is going to be the default for that. So if you're like, I don't want to keep changing something, um, then just make make it something that sets as default and then work from there. So now, like when I load up this block, it has those two colors set because I've set that to be the default every time I add a new one of those blocks. And to be really clear, defaults are not global styles. This is not linked to anything it's just when you add a new block how you what you want these settings to be defaulted to um so if i change the default now like if i go in and say actually you know i don't want that color i want um this black instead or whatever um and i want the text to be this red which is not accessible but for the sake of this we'll do it um I'm not changing anything in an existing block. It's all just about what's new. Um, and so then when I add a new block, that becomes the new default. Great. Okay. Um, and that's on every block, by the way. Like previously, we didn't have it set up for every single block, but we have that and custom styles. So, you know, I can copy styles and paste them a lot easier now across blocks where like um we'll just go here copy paste and that drops in okay and then in terms of um reusable blocks versus block defaults can you talk a little bit about um a strategy for handling or or using those types of things yeah, reusable blocks would be kind of different. Like that would be, you would use reusable blocks usually if you are wanting to have a global setting somewhere that you can change later. Like if I have um, a, reusable blocks are tricky because it's so, there's just so few places where it's really that helpful and they're only powerful if you're going to like keep them globally synced, if you're just using reusable blocks as a way to store patterns that you then put into your page and then up make them normal blocks, that's fine. But like, I would just copy and paste blocks around rather than doing reusable blocks. But if your work style is that way, like if you like that style, that's fine. Sure. Um, so where it can be helpful is if you're like this section right here, I know I want to use this section on multiple pages of my website. So I'm going to make this whole section a reusable block. I'm going to put this on my about page and my home page and my contact page. 
And if I ever need to change my hours, I can go into the reusable block, update it once, and it'll update it across all of those places. And that's the, that's the real power of a reusable block is that you're saying, I have this certain section of a page that I want to be globally synced into other pages. Um, and I want to be able to update it once and it update across all of those. Right. And how would that compare to using Cadence Elements? Would Cadence Elements be a better way of handling that versus reusable blocks? Or is Not that... if it's in the content like this. Okay. In the content like this, using reusable blocks makes sense. Elements are really powerful if you're wanting to add things around your page content. Like you're wanting to add something before or after or a fixed thing or whatever, or just setting a whole template. Um, if you're just like, hey, I just want this section to be globally linked across three okay. pages, using a reusable block is, the, is what's going to make it easier because then you can go into any one of those pages and update it and then it'll automatically update back. Okay, great. Um, just have a couple mm -hmm. more like rapid fire questions and then we, we're only got a, about 15 minutes left and I'd like to, um, I'd like to focus a little bit on now that we've got this foundation where we're going. So sure. um, Paul, Paul Welburn has a comment or a question about the type text. Would that affect um, focus keywords? Like if you're using Yoast and you want, you know, this page to rank really well with specific keywords, how would type text affect that? Uh, it would be, what is your, the default one is what's going to be used. Yeah. So yeah. in this case, it's adventure because that's my, like, that's what's going to show up in the DOM. And then it's actually, it's just data inside of that span tag that's actually telling it what to switch to, and that's all JavaScript driven. So the the first word is going to be the word that is registered by Google, or you know, for the sake of SEO. Okay, that's really good. And good not data. the words, not the words here. Perfect. Okay. And then we have a lot of people in um, watching live today that are using Cadence Cloud. How does Blocks mm -hmm. 3 and everything that we're doing affect um, anything that we've got stored in Cadence Cloud? And do we need to do any updates on that particular server? Um, can you just talk to that? Yeah. So for now, I would say if you're running a cloud library to wait to update 3.0, because you're going to have users that haven't updated yet. And then like if you they import a 3.0 version of blocks into their two site, it's not going to work. Whereas we did make it backward compatible, a two plus block structure that you have, when you import that into a three, we automatically update it. A good example of that is like the buttons. You know, if you try to go back after you've turned buttons into single blocks, it WordPress doesn't know what to do with it because it doesn't have a migrate backwards thing. Um, and so for now, I would keep your libraries using two, at least until you can gauge your user base. I am working on an update. We haven't got it out yet. I'm hoping to get it out probably next week where we're going to warn a user if they're trying to import 3.0 blocks into a two point whatever site. So we're going to basically tell, like we're updating cloud to be able to add that information into the data. And then inside of Cadence Blocks, when you go to update that, when you go to like drop that in, it's going to say, hey, this piece of, excuse me, content is was built on Blocks 3.0 plus and you're using an older version. Please update Blocks to import this content. And then that way for everyone at that point, then, you know, I would just go ahead and update and then your users will get a warning versus like just seeing something broken. So good, good. Good deal. Okay, we've seen a lot of people asking for features. And hey, did you do this? When are we going to have this? How about this? Mm -hmm. And I know there's when you see the power of what Cadence can do, you can't help but say, mm -hmm. hey, can it, can what, it make what else? morning coffee? Do yeah. all the things. Yeah, let's can do it, it all. Do all the things, right. And yeah. so we have a, can you talk a little bit about, um, Hannah, maybe you can tell a little bit about how uh, features are handled. Where should people go if they have a great idea that's going to improve Cadence, that's going that they really need for their site? How can they get that into our dub flow? Because yeah, in so the live can... chat, it's not going to work. I know. I was actually just about to link to the um, feature requests. There are actually somebody asked about a YouTube block. Ben, I'm not sure if you have a, any kind of timeline on that, but there is a feature request for it with 66 votes currently. 
Um, and we look at those and Ben responds to those and those actually play in a lot to blocks that are added. So they, you yeah, can add feature how we plan. there. Yeah, totally. Um, and there's a separate page for blocks and also for Cadence theme. So um, it's cadencewp.com backslash Cadence blocks slash feature requests all into it right. or Gilbert can. Um, yeah. So we'll have a link yeah, in, the, the best in the place. But people yeah, post just... stuff on Facebook a lot too in the Facebook group. That's not the best place for requests. You can post stuff there and then make a request and then like leave Li like yeah, link get to it link to it in Facebook group, and, be like, hey. and then get people to vote on it. Yeah. So yeah, because if it's join if me something's in, in the feature request and nobody's voted on it, it's like yeah, we're probably not going to prioritize it. But something with sixty six votes um, is going to like bump up its way to the top of the list. So. Yeah. Amazing. And Gilbert's got that link in the chat yes, thanks, right there Gilbert. and it's on the screen down below. So And there's another oh, one there. for Cadence um, block specifically, Gilbert, if you want to link to that one as well. Right. I'll actually, I'll link to the YouTube one that um, somebody asked about. Okay, perfect. All right, Ben, we've got the crystal ball. Well, I've got my crystal ball, but you have it all in a plan, don't you? What's coming yeah. next for Cadence? Yeah, so um, the... The immediate future is we're going to get the form block into Cadence um, and we got to get the progress bar block in, um, which are both close. Um, the form block is kind of a new, it's like a mix between a reusable block uh, and something kind of new. So it's like pretty exciting new uh, way to do a, a block like this. Uh, and makes a lot of sense for forms. It's going to make it a lot more, a lot easier to make more advanced forms and um, to add on to forms in ways that you would think of. Um, so how that works just real quickly is it'll create a custom post type. That custom post type is where that form content will live. Everything inside of that post type is essentially in the form and you'll be able to add like row layout blocks and column blocks into it to set up your form to where you're like, I want to get their, you know, this kind of information all in a single section and then this in another column, but then on mobile, I want that like that to switch based on sections and not just like individual um, items. So it'll, it's like a tool to build a, a you know, a form with inner blocks where you, you know, every field is its own inner block. Um, but that is really a new structure to what we already have plus a couple extra things like a date input and a file upload input, a couple new inputs, a couple new connections like convert kit. Um, so that's really step one is we're doing this whole new kind of structure with building, but giving you kind of the same or pretty similar feature set as our current form block, which is it, you know, it works great to create custom contact forms and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. In the future, we'll be adding even more to this where we'll be adding like um, payments just... and things like that. Go <laughs> That's ahead. That's the thing. That's the thing. Okay. So I look confused, Marcus, huh? I'm like listening to Ben talk about this. <laughs> Having been a WordPress user for like over a decade and seeing all of these forms plugins, and I'm like, this is the functionality that I would install a forms plugin for. Correct. And yeah. it would have my my forms like in a custom post type and it would have exportable. I mean, we still can kind of do that now with the form block, but all of the function, it, it, it sounds like you're creating a form yeah. plugin all yeah. in cadence blocks. There's That's actually I'm confused because this is just like huge. Well, there's a lot of people internally who want me to spin that out as its own plugin. <laughs> um, so I'm like, we're having that debate internally as to whether or not cadence form should be its own uh, plugin or not, because it works like that. What, what is different about this is that you don't have to go and build it in a custom post type. You build it right in the page where you want to use it yeah. and all of the settings and everything is there. It's yeah. just all behind the scenes that we're doing this in a custom post type. And then yeah. just like a reusable block, if you want to go edit that, apply it to multiple pages, edit it in one source, you'll be able to do that. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's what I historically, you know, contact form seven, all my friends had 
you know, I have friends at Forms Plugins. I love you guys. But you go into their plugin, you build your form, and then you short code it into your page. And so it's yeah. like you kind of have to like reserve this little place in your mind of what is this going to look like? What am I trying to do in terms of my customer journey that I'm mapping out? And now you're telling me that I'm going to have that separate place to hold all of that data, but I'll be building a form within Cadence within the page. So I don't yeah. have to have that reserved place in my brain. So I, that's Marcus, that's what you're seeing. I'm like mapping this out in my head, <laughs> visualizing it. And I'm like, yeah. Whoa. I mean, I can't, I'm kind of playing it up because I kind of knew this already. I mean, I'm on the Cadence <laughs> team, but I do, I'm, you know, I play I the appreciate role you of... playing this up. You definitely are, are doing a great job. Um, oh cause yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to say like, <laughs> hold off on your expectation for like conditional fields and multi-step. That is something we're working on. It's just much further out than getting what we currently have, um, pretty close to ready out. And so back to roadmap that in the, the, um, progress bar, which the progress bar has the ability to do a bar, a circle and a half circle, um, which is fun. So like, that's just like been a longstanding feature request. We're going to get that out. Um, and then what's coming potentially super soon, we're going to start asking for beta tests to Sean is a new design library for cadence where we're going to take away our wireframe library and our section library and give you a new library with something like 300 different items in it. And even initially, um, and cool variations already built in. So be using um, some cool ways to like, just do a much more, a much broader wireframe library slash already works with your designs. And you can say like, I want dark background or I want highlight background, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's, I don't, we're, we're talking about getting beta testers on that as early as next week. So that's like also right around the corner. And then as we go out, just to be clear, Blocks Pro 2.0 with kind of the restructuring similar to what we did with Blocks Free. And then there's two, we need to solve for reusable custom fields. And we're going to try to do that in the advanced query block, unless that gets super weird. And then we'll create a separate block for just for repeatable fields. But I think we'll be able to do it in the advanced query block because then that'll create some really cool opportunities where you could query a taxonomy and then show like all kinds of stuff for just like a taxonomy and then a custom post type. And so um, the advanced query block will be something that comes um, and we're working on like filters for that and everything. Amazing. Accessibility. It <laughs> so important so critically important these days um can you talk a little bit about that with 3.0 it's one of the one of the questions top of mind and i forgot to ask it earlier yeah for sure so we have largely approached it as like we're doing the best practices we know to do and we're listening to a lot of experts in the field when they come to us and be like hey you should consider tweaking that so a lot of the accessibility stuff has been built in from way before three and there's not a whole lot that we were like okay hey, we need to completely change how we do this for accessibility. A few things would be like, we did update some markup to make it make more sense if you're not just like a bot, but also like screen reader, um, especially in the gallery block where we're using like these sliders and stuff. And um, the new sliders and, or, and light boxes are a little bit, built a little bit more accessibility in mind than the previous ones. But overall, I'm... Like we're still approaching this as like, as far as we're aware, when whenever an accessibility issue comes in, we're like, okay, that gets top of list and let's deal with it. And so that's very much how we've um, approached it so far. And so, yeah, there's, I know of one current accessibility thing that we're talking about getting up out in 3.1 um, that's on our to-do list. That's pretty minor. Um, just in how um, certain layouts work. But overall, I would expect the same standard to continue. There it is. Amazing. Thank you. 
I am very happy <laughs> about that as well. Accessibility is so, so important. And I think it's yeah. going to be very top of mind to a lot of people. Um, any other things on the roadmap that we should, that we want to highlight? And then Hannah and I have a couple of things we want to talk about. Don't we, Hannah? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll just throw it out there that we're definitely playing around with AI. So I would expect to see something this year. With that, then <laughs> just drop <we're>, that there. <laughs> just drop that out there. We're playing yeah. around. We're, we're getting excited about what yeah. we can do. So trying to do it a little differently than what's out there. And I think it, you know, I don't want to jump ahead or have people email me every day like, <laughs> when is it out? When is it out? But it's something we're working on and we have a team working on it. That's exciting. Yeah. I'm really. pretty excited by what's coming out, what we're like, what we're seeing. So I am, I am excited too. This, I think this year is going to just be, I don't know, a whole new world for cadence. And I I'm really excited about it. Um, so Hannah, you and I, we, you and I just have these conversations and all kinds of good ideas come out. And then we are like, hey, Ben, guess what we're going to do? <laughs> um, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing with Cadence Amplify? And uh, Gilbert's yes. already got some links in, uh, in the chat for people Amazing. to jump into. Yeah, so we're hosting an event on March 16th. And it's a little different from anything we've done, but I think it'll be awesome. Um, but we're going to have different people from our community share um, a topic of their choice, basically geared towards their audience, talking about how they love Cadence or how Cadence has helped them or just something like, I want to talk about SEO or I want to talk about whatever. Um, and we're just going to have like a virtual conference of sorts. That's a lame word. That sounds like a really boring word. It'll be way more fun than a conference. <laughs> but um <laughs> we're gonna allow we're gonna hopefully today we're gonna post a um form so you can apply to be a speaker if you don't get selected it's okay we probably will do this again because we're getting really good feedback about it so like hold on to your topic for the next time but definitely join us um and it'll be such a fun day march 16th march mark your calendar March 16th yes Anything it's gonna be on a seen? thursday and it's just gonna be a live stream yeah. we'll have you know like you said, great presentations and opportunities, again, yeah. to come, jump into the comments, be a part of the community, talk with everybody and see what people are doing, ask a lot of questions of people who are really top notch in their mm -hmm. field and have some expertise to share. I'm so excited about it. Yes. And well, the yeah. business Zoom meeting. Marcus, you cracked me up so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm here for the lulls. Um, I think Ben and Hannah just kind of put up with my jokes every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> so, I'm glad glad that you're bringing them too. That's so fun. Um, so we're really excited about that. We hope you can join us on yeah. that day. You can register for the event on um, the links that Gilbert is sharing. And we'll have those out in our in mailings and social and all that goofy stuff too. Yeah. Um, also, People, I know, we want to do this marketplace, and it's just been like, yeah, it's so coming. Focused. It's coming, right, Hannah? We've got it mapped out. It's just like, okay. There's strides that happened. have happened. It's not just like it's in the background. Like, it's really coming into place. There's just been a lot going on. But it's coming. And thank you to the people who um, we've been in contact with who have already contributed. And it's, yeah, it's going to be an amazing resource for people. And I'm super excited about it. I am too. Very exciting because we want to help you guys be successful with Cadence too. We know mm -hmm. a lot of you are building amazing things with Cadence cloud libraries. I just love seeing, I am so excited. Whenever I see anybody finding success with Cadence, I am all over it. And you'll see me post about your successes in the Facebook group. If you're not a part of the Facebook group, get in there. We're having fun. Um, I want to yeah. celebrate you because what you do with Cadence is why we're here. This gives what you do, building your, your life stream, building your business, building opportunities for other people. So exciting to us. I get chills every time I talk to someone like Maestro and he shows me what he's working on. Um, I thank you for everything that you do because when, when I see what Ben does and all of the amazing things he's doing to give to you and what you do with it, it 
gives me my purpose, my why, the why I'm here. So you keep me motivated, you keep me excited, and you're exciting everyone else. So keep doing it, keep sharing about all of those things, and we are going to do our best to get that marketplace going as soon as possible. Um, yeah. Someone just asked about the time frame for that Cadence event on the 16th. It's going to be an all-day type of thing. We'll have the schedule up on the site and share that off on socials and email as well. So just check for things. But we want to hear what you want to talk about. Submit something. So we bet yeah. Hannah and I can schedule this all out, right? Yeah. Totally. Cool. And we're so grateful that you were here. It's it's one o'clock at my time. Noon, your time. We yeah. need to feed Ben yeah. and let him take Lunch a nap. Time. He's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys, everyone, for showing up. We'll probably do uh, more videos. Yeah. We'll talk more about CLAMP and all of the things that you're bringing up of, of questions. Um, we will have content that solves those problems and answers those questions for you. Keep the bug reports coming. Ben, any last words? Uh, yeah, keep those reports coming. And um, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're, as expected, this is a time where we get a lot of support. So if it's a little bit longer than usual, have patience with us. We're... We're going to get to you. Amazing. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Yeah. And thanks for being part of our community. We'll see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <clears throat>